Jefferson. Let's refer to what Thomas Jefferson said. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the use of their currency, first by inflation and then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. Stacey Herbert. Max, that sure sounds like what we see in Europe today. The people are being deprived of all their property and are made homeless. But it also applies, of course, to the United States. Mark Faber, Mr. Bernanke is a murderer of the middle class. <laughs> yes, that's true, Mark Faber is correct. How did he do it? By lowering interest rates artificially down to near zero. Anyone who's on a retirement, pension plan, et cetera, or has any kind of savings got wiped out to help the bankers. That was the quid pro quo that Bernanke made with the bankers. I'll murder the middle class you give me huge bonus money and kudos and let me keep this ridiculously stupid job, chairman of the federal counterfeiting bank. Well, Mark Faber's quote is, if you print money, everything will go up. And now the money printing doesn't go into housing because we have an oversupply of housing, but it goes into equities and for Mr. Bernanke, unfortunately, into commodities. And this is lifting the cost of living of the median household, of the typical household in the U.S. Mr. Bernanke is a murderer. He's a murderer of the middle class and the working class. Yeah, it's a sad joke because the point of expanding credit as he did was to try to revive the housing bubble. The housing prices keep going down, but now we see bubbles in food and energy. So not only do people live in housing that's going negative equity, but they're paying more for food and energy, and the result is basically economic financial death. People are now homeless, middle class is eviscerated because Bernanke is a fool. Well, you know, his predecessor, Alan Greenspan in 1966, speaking of quotes, Max, had this to say, in the absence of the gold standard, there is no way to protect savings from confiscation through inflation. Deficit spending is simply a scheme for the confiscation of wealth. And this is exactly what we've seen. They act as if it's charity, that the low rates are there to help the working class and the middle class, to get onto the property ladder, to be able to afford these assets. But you see, from Europe all the way to the United States, all throughout the United States, it's this so-called charity which actually helped murder them financially. Well, look, Greenspan, when he made those comments, he was also talking about how the Fed, through a monetarist policy, could create a dollar standard that was, quote, as good as gold, which is false. There's nothing as good as gold but gold. And when you give someone like Bernanke or Greenspan or the banks on Wall Street the ability to loan money into existence with no collateral, you're giving somebody the ability to counterfeit money, and the result is inflation and hyperinflation. And, of course, Mark Faber is absolutely correct. You know, all these central bankers are murderers, therefore they're a class of serial killers. <laughs> and I think Ben Bernanke might be John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy? The killer clown. Really? Remember he performed as Pogo the Clown at charitable events and performed for children. And uh, he ended up actually, he was using that as a cover to murder 33 children. Oh yeah, John Wayne Gacy, he'd show up at the kids show, right? And he'd start making balloon animals. And meanwhile, he'd be out there murdering the kids in the backyard. This is Ben Bernanke. This is the US dollar. It's absolutely worthless. This is Bernanke's contribution to society. He's simply making, he call what is this? A credit default swap? What is this, a bailout? What do you call this? This is a, this is a catastrophe. This is Bernanke's contribution to monetary policy. Let's look at something that Zero Hedge found, a correlation that might or not, might not prove Mark Faber's assertion. 91.3% correlation between food stamp usage and the S&P, or how wealth effect equals poverty effect. So you see the white line in this chart, that's food stamp usage, the increase in the United States since 2009, and the yellow line is the S&P. White line. <laughs> oh, what? Oh yeah, well that's right, there's correlation there because they are creating an artificial rally in stocks that will result in a huge catastrophic 20 to 30% collapse one day, as it does every six or seven or eight years. 
And of course, that makes the insiders fabulously wealthy because they make those negative bets like Goldman Sachs does on their own clients. Meanwhile, everyone who has money in the stock market and believes that they're buying something of value, they get wiped out again. And then they need food stamps. Who makes the food stamps? Oh, JP Morgan, they get another payday. Those people are now on food stamps, which is another form of inflation because they're just printing more money. It's money printing. That's what food stamps are all about. They're just increasing the amount of nonsensical phantom confetti, balloon animal paper in the system is worthless. Well, I, I think that's the, the point that Zero Hedge is trying to make. Ben Bernanke is printing money. It's QE2, per, perhaps QE3 coming up. All the money is going into either equities or commodities, driving up the price of food, thus causing more and more people to have to rely on food stamps in America. <clears throat> well put. <laughs> no, but now speaking of the Fed, they're in the following headline. Fed's biggest foreign bank bailout saved U.S. muni bonds. A European bank that received the most Federal Reserve discount window help during the financial crisis also took $381 billion in aid from its home countries and owned subsidiaries implicated in bid rigging that prosecutors say defrauded U.S. taxpayers. So this is a... Uh, Dexia Bank, based in Brussels and Paris, and it borrowed as much as $37 billion from the Fed with an average daily loan amount of $12.3 billion in the 18 months after Lehman Brothers Holdings collapsed. If they made this into a film, it would be triple X rated. Because what you've got here are banks inserting collateralized debt obligations of various derivatives into each other's orifice, is plural, uh, in an overlapping manner, and then they lube it up with some of that uh, credit default swaps, thanks to Blythe Masters over there at JP Morgan, and you end up with an unholy orgy, so you don't really know where, what arm fits to what body, what leg sticking out of what, and it's this ungodly concatenation of corrupt kleptocrats swapping spit with each other and other vital banking fluids in a way that create essentially banking gonorrhea is what we can say. Dexia Bank is banking gonorrhea only to be exceeded by JP Morgan, which is the equivalent of banking syphilis. Well, Max, the subsidiary of Dexia Bank was called Financial Security Assurance. And they're in this headline from October 2008, during this time that they were visiting the Fed discount window. Research update. Financial Security Assurance Incorporated triple A ratings placed on Credit Watch negative. So this is from Standard and Poor, and they still had the triple A rating on Financial Security Assurance that was at the time engaged in defrauding U.S. taxpayers and receiving money from U.S. taxpayers. They put it on negative watch after just uh, marking down the credit rating for Dexia. Right, we've mentioned it before. S&P, Standard and Poor's, Moody's. They're part of a syndicate engaged in defrauding the global banking system customers and the taxpayer. Okay, they are committing massive fraud. Moody's, S&P, Fitch, they're financial terrorists. But again, you know, the AAA rating, and at the time, it was backed by Dexia. The French economy minister is saying that Dexia was two days away from bankruptcy. They were bailed out and rescued by the French and Belgium and Luxembourg governments but they had a triple A rating and were therefore able to borrow at zero percent and then lend to these municipalities across America, which are now bankrupt. They're being ha they have uh, austerity measures forced upon them. All of them are having their pensions, their wealth, their property seized via the currency of these credit default swaps that were created in order to defraud them of their property and wealth. Go to YouTube, watch this show, rewind the last 20 seconds and watch it about two or three times to fully embrace what we're talking about.